Okay, good morning, everybody. I guess we'll go ahead and get started. We're running a little bit late today. We were waiting on Craig uh, and uh, Dick Mahoney, but I don't think they're going to be here this morning, so we're just going to go ahead and move on. Uh, so I'll go ahead and call us to order now, and uh, the first item would be approval of the minutes. I make a motion that they're approved. And all in favor? All right. Okay. And then uh, the next item today, uh, we have a presentation from Kerry with United Healthcare. Thank you for coming, Kerry. Yeah, no problem. All right. So in the packet is the presentation. There we go. So this is a key metrics plan utilization report for your active and COBRA group, as well as your early retirees. So we also have your post-65 retiree segment on that NPPO plan. That's not included in this. This is what we call our commercial book of business. We have a separate team that pulls together that data. So I'm going to focus in on these two today. Um, what we did is we put together a quick summary. Um, we've got your active and COBRA group together in one section because they do have a different set of rates. We look at them separately. So as we go through this, that's why we've kind of broken them out into the two sections. So you've got active in COBRA and early retirees. We put together information for your calendar year 2017, so January through December. And then we also pulled what we call a rolling 12 or the most current 12 months of data um, at the time that we pulled the report. So that's actually April 17 through March 18. So you can kind of see, okay, Compared to our 2017 plan or calendar year, are we tracking along kind of consistently or do we start to see any changes in that? So on that first slide, your member months for the active in COBRA is 77,571. Basically, the way you get to that number is your average number of members in that group for a month times 12. So it's an annualized number. So when you see member months, that's actually a, an annualized number that we're going to use to kind of get through um, some of the costs and things like that. So just real quickly, um, total cost for that group was $39,495,000. You can see the early retirees was right at four. And then if you do compare the active in COBRA for 17 through March of 18, those are going to be pretty similar. So we are tracking along in the total cost category. Your per member per month is that PMPM. You'll see that a couple times in the report. That is broken out by member within that category. So a member every month is about $509.16 of that total cost when you break those out. Your total premium, you can see down there below, is 45 million, basically 45.5, and then 3.2, and that 2017 jumps up just a little bit. Um, for the actives, if you go over to the rolling 12 and down just a slight bit in the early retirees, do keep in mind we had that 1-1 one, one renewal. There was a little bit of an increase, so you're going to see that in some of the premium numbers, that sort of thing. And then we did break out your total premium per member per month. Again, you can see 586.51 in the actives versus the 686 for the rolling 12, and then 1233 versus 1261. That would be representative of those premiums. And then we did do a couple more pages. Um, inpatient and outpatient overview, again, broken up in the same way. So all of your columns are going to be the same across the board. We gave you your total inpatient paid for your actives and COBRAs. It was 8910 for your early retirees. And then if you get into the rolling 12, it went down a little bit to 7.6 on the active and COBRA, but it bumped up a little bit in your early retirees. I do want to point out, you know, keep in mind as you're looking at claim cost information and utilization that your active in COBRA is anyone currently active on the plan. So you've got people that are 20 to about 63 and all of their spouses and dependents. That early retiree segment is really much more focused on about a 50 to a 64 age group. And so those members tend to have more prescriptions more outpatient surgeries, things like that. So it makes sense to see the big difference in your claim cost when you look at, especially from a per member per month, when you stratify those out. So the total inpatient per member per month is 106.07 in 2017. Actually went down by about $7 when you look at the rolling 12 for your actives. It went up quite a bit when you look at your retirees. So we do have some more cost that seems to be um, applicable to those groups. 
I did give you some benchmarks. So your total inpatient benchmark per member per month, that would be any Oklahoma member that's currently on this same type of plan. So not just city, but anybody else that we would have on our United Healthcare Book of Business. Um, that is 102 for the 2017 year, and then 101.36 in the active category for our rolling 12. So you guys are a, um, a little bit below that now in your active group for that rolling 12. Um, again, you're higher in the early retiree just because of that age group and, and what's kind of associated there. Your total outpatient, your total outpatient per member per month, and then those benchmarks as well are below. Um, your benchmark outpatient currently is $151.07. So in your active group, you're well under that. And then, of course, again, early retirees, kind of consistently, you're going to be higher than that. The next slide is a prescription overview. So we are showing your total scripts filled in the active group is 82,950 for 2017. Pretty consistent as we look at that rolling tool, a couple have fallen off, um, but the average is still very close. And again, same for your early retirees. Total number of scripts filled has been pretty consistent. We haven't changed a lot within the prescription plan. You still have the same three levels of copays, coverage is the same. So looking at that, you're not going to see any plan impact there. So it makes sense to see those numbers be pretty similar. Yeah. It's a little bit low, um, but this plan is set up a little bit different than some of our, um, like our HMO business that's on one of our other categories. It's our Navigate plan or our true PPO plans where we really push members to mail order in our PPO plan. Um, there's some, um, we'll call them very strong stick and carrots. <laughs> Um, to get them enrolled in that, we um, engage the members pretty heavily. On this plan, we don't do that. We make it available, but we don't force it. You can see that um, your percent of generic scripts is 86 and 84 in 2017, 86 and 85 for the rolling 12. That's pretty good. Um, your percent of formulary utilization currently is 93 in the active and 95% in the early retirees, so that's good. Uh, you know, again, your average copay per script, which is up there at the top, $12 across the board. Just as a quick reminder, you guys have a three-tier prescription plan, so it's $10 for a generic, $25 for a brand, and then $40 for a non-formulary, so $40 for any drug that's not on that formulary list. So the fact that you guys have, you know, 86, 85% generic utilization, and then high utilization of the formula, it means that your members are using the plan appropriately. They're getting the biggest bang for their buck. The next few slides are premium versus claims per member per month. So this just breaks out on a monthly basis how many subscribers, which are your employees, how many members, which are your total covered persons, total premium, total cost, and then what that claim to premium ratio is by month. At the bottom, we're going to give an average. In your 2017 plan year for the active and COBRA group, your average was 87%. You didn't really have one month that was super high or super low. Um, and as we flip to the next couple pages, you can kind of see as comparison where we're going now that we've had a couple months of the, you know, the new plan rates in there. So the next slide is your rolling 12. So this is going to add in January, February, and March of 2018 and it's going to have those um, last three months fall off. So it's going to be your April through March. We are getting a little bit better. We're at an 85% total now. Average for quarter one 2018 is 80%. So we actually like you right about that spot, 80%. That's kind of a happy you know, break-even target where we're getting enough premium to cover the claims. So we like to see you in, you know, 80% or better is, is good. Now for the early retirees. <laughs> it's a little bit different story. Um, so your 2017 plan year for early retirees, again, stratified in the exact same way. You can see we have a lot less membership enrolled. Um, your actives have a, a lot more people. The early retirees, of course, is a, a smaller section of your membership, so you're going to have less enrollment. This one for 2017, your... Average was 130%, so you're running pretty hot. 
You had a few months that were over 150, um, one that hit 160. So this particular group has quite a few claims that are of high cost that are impacting the plan compared to the premium for that group. So it is something we might want to kind of keep an eye on. Historically, they've always run a little bit high because of the age group and what we know that's associated with them. When we look at this as a whole, we look at the actives, the COBRAs and the early retirees together when we look at this with underwriting, but because we do have them stratified for cost purposes and premiums, that's why you see the differences when you look at them separately. Then if you flip to the next page, it's your rolling 12, so the most recent 12 months, which includes that quarter one information. You are now at 136% for your average. Um, so we're unfortunately not getting much better. The quarter one 2018 average for those first three months was 145. So maybe something we pay attention to as we kind of talk through and, and get into plan designs and, and steerage and some things like that once we get closer to renewal talks, that sort of thing. But um, as an overview, that's your you know kind of snapshot of your 2017 plan year and how it's comparing as we get into 2018. I did include a few key terms in the back, but you know, nothing that's, that's out of norm. Any questions about this or anything in general on the United Plan? Okay. Thank you, Kara, appreciate it. Thank you. Tough numbers on there. So we'll just uh, jump right into our uh, group indemnity reports. Um, as we had discussed last time, uh, you know these are kind of in design phase. We're, we're trying to get them a little bit more useful for us, um, but I, I think we've got a better iteration. So hopefully they're a little bit user um, friendly, more user friendly this time. And you know, feel free to give me feedback after the meeting, and we can talk about. Um, you know, any changes that you might want. But you know, as we look at the group indemnity plan for our actives, um, I have to say I've, I'm, I'm encouraged. The, the first uh, four months, January through April, have been looking pretty good um, relative to 2017. So um, I'm happy with the trend. Hopefully it continues to go that way. I think it's, once again, I'm, I'm always hesitant to, to call it a trend before we see some more data. But um, so far, so good. So hopefully it keeps up that way. The, the cl clinic definitely pulls some of the primary care stuff off of the plan. So yes, I, I think that's probably um, contributing. I just don't know to what extent. Uh, and then on the next page, we have our non-Medicare retirees, our early retirees. Um, once again, uh, looking pretty good uh, on our uh, on our claims um, in that uh, the standard plan uh, is, is looking like a cost savings for the first you know, January through April time frame. Now on our alternate plan, our more popular plan, we're seeing a slight uptick. Um, and I think that um, that's probably related to folks shifting off of our standard plan off of the 250 and moving towards the little bit more, um, the higher copay plan. Um, and so we're just getting more individuals who are gonna have more claims over there. So. Um, we'll keep an eye on that, but uh, I'm not super concerned about that at this point. And then in our Medicare retirees, um, similar story. For our standard plan, we're looking at savings from January through April, so looking pretty good. We're running well. Um, and then uh, in our uh, alternate plan, we're, we're seeing a slight uptick there. But once again, I think that's a, you know, a slight increase in membership there. And then flipping over to our UHC, uh, the only thing I'd call out there is, uh, you know, May, uh, we're seeing our first uh, premium rate at the new rate since implementing the changes with the higher co-pays. Um, and so you're seeing that difference in that, um, I don't know, how, what, the, the member cost, uh, that differential there, you're actually seeing that slight decrease. Um, and so, you know, that's the five-ish percent savings that we were discussing earlier from making the changes. If we take that number out for the rest of the year, you know, we're looking at 1.4 to 1.6 million savings for the plan. So 
you know, it's a good thing, and that's that's why we made the change. And yes, ma'am. So, so we're happy to see that that's that's flowing through nicely. Um, nothing else I would call out on the HMO side of the house, though. Um, and then as far as the rest of the reporting goes, nothing really stood out um, significantly different. Um, it's, it's, you know, pretty much what we've seen over the last few months. Um, you know, one thing I, I wanted to skip ahead to, uh, and just in other items, unless anyone has any questions on the, the reporting, is uh, we did receive information from United Healthcare um, regarding a change to our MAPD plan. So in the way that they're treating um, opioid prescriptions, um, in response to changes with Medicare. So um, I did forward that information out. I'm going to get you guys a copy here of the email that we sent out. And I, I got that. Um, and so, and I did send something to all our retiree groups um, with Neil, George, and Linda. And so um, the, the thing to, to point out is, um, you know, it, it's going to affect about 12 of our members currently. Um, and the changes are going to be, you know, a one-month supply restriction on uh, both retail and mail for opioids, um, a first fill seven-day supply limit for individuals new to opioid therapy, um, and a cumulative op opioid safety edit threshold, um, or in other words, uh, at 200 um, MME, which is, in other words, if they have multiple prescriptions out there, they're going to you know, do the combination and verify that they're not exceeding that if they have prescriptions from multiple providers. Um, and so all of those safeties are going to be uh, put into effect on 1-1 of 2019. Um, and so, like I said, we've, we, we're going to, uh, UHC will notify the members individually, but it will be uh, an impact on at least 12 of our members, and I think probably more in the future just because, you know, the, the opioid crisis is rampant right now. And then uh, just moving on, uh, any, uh, any things from any of our committee members? Any comments or items you'd like to bring to our attention? Can we ever give our issue kind of straightened down? Uh, I hate to say this, but we're tracking um, more than one prescription issue. Uh, which one specifically now? Like, just, just general problems with um, the transition to prime. So, so far, um, we're not tracking any active cases, so I think we've got most everyone taken care of. Um, we did have some pain initially just because we had so many overrides in place that, um, you know, I mean, we were dealing with a custom formulary for decades and then transitioning members to the new, um, to the, the new formulary and making sure they got plugged in um, I think was a little bit painful for some of the members, and yeah. and I have to say it's it's a good thing. But I, not to disparage ESI, but I feel like they were a little bit more loose and fast with the way they applied the rules, um, what they would ship, and, and and so on and so forth. So unfortunately, I think that because Prime is more compliant with the rules that they should be to protect our members, um, it, that's been a little bit painful too because had to play by the rules a little bit more, and I, I think ultimately that will be a good thing, but I know for several people that was, that was tough to get transitioned to. So. Anything else we want to discuss while we're here? All right. Is there yes, sir. any more talk on getting the care increases as far as to other locations? There is discussion on that. Um, we're, we're currently uh, kind of planning for what that might look like um, because the thing of it is, is we have to plug that into our current plans right to, to make sure that you know our insurance companies can work with us as far as if we do have a network of carry TC we have to incorporate that into everything to rates how they how they go about claims and things like that so we're talking about it now um, I think one of the biggest holdups honestly is is not our discussion with our providers it's it's more um, carry TC and what they're developing in the Oklahoma City area. So their, their plan, as, um, as they've told me, is to um, develop something like they have near Tulsa. And so in Tulsa, they have eight facilities, I think, now. Um, and so they're working to build that, but 
I think it's this chicken and the egg thing. So they want contracts with folks like us to say, yes, we will we'll open up an additional clinic or we'll pay, we'll pay for an additional doctor so that they can get additional facilities put up. But a lot of us are hesitant to say, yes, we'll go in on another one. We'd rather wait till you have that network available. So it's, that's kind of where we're at. And, and so we're still um, in talks with them. Um, I'm hoping to see something roll out for our next plan year. So I don't know what that's going to look like yet. And number one, I know that the, just, I know that the patients and the people using me, this thing is only going up. And so I don't, I mean, do we have any figures to show like from last year to this year how many more people are using it first thing? The trend is where it's going because that, that also determines you will get enough more of it in the usage of the thing. Absolutely. So looking at reporting from Carrie TC on utilization, so the way they, they go about um, scheduling their service is they receive roughly two and a half patients per hour. Um, and based on that number, we are running over the last few months, actually probably the last several months, we've been running 125% utilization. So from Cary TC's perspective, we're full. We're, and, and I think from our members' perspective, that's pretty similar because they're having to wait a few weeks, probably up to four or five weeks to get in. Um, and so I think we are at that threshold. Now, I do want to drill in um, to carry to see a little bit more and, and really break out what the doctor is seeing versus what the clinic is seeing because the, there's going to be a gap there of, you know, the, the doctor obviously has to do, you know, all of his recording and all that information as well, but there are many visits that are uh, medical assistant only type visits. Right. And I just want to make sure that we're factoring that in and making sure we're getting enough people through. So that's, that's kind of one of the only things I would say regarding utilization. But yeah, according to CARE-TC, we're, we're due for another doctor, and they've said that for a few months. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think we've got a really good team over there. Um, and once again, it's just kind of that struggle of, you know, they're looking at that two and a half patients per, per hour. Well, they don't always take that long. So we have to balance that with we want an excellent level of care for our folks and to have enough time with the doctor. And, and that's really the sales pitch from Carrie to see, and that's why we bought into Carrie to see. But in practice, we also have to consider you know, we're only seeing two and a half patients per hour. If we, if we were to compare that to a general physician out there in the world, you know, I don't think we want to be on that end of the spectrum, but they're maybe seeing eight to nine patients per hour. I don't want to be anywhere close to that. I'm just struggling with what the exact place on that spectrum is. So anyways, that's probably more than you asked for, but that's, that's what we're thinking about. So answer your question, yes, we are considering the network. Um, and. Hopefully we'll have information about that um, as we get closer to enrollment and all that. So in the next month or two, I'm, I'm hoping to have some better information for you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else? All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, if that being the case, I will adjourn us.